Hello and welcome to TechBridge Innovations. Uh, this is the second video of uh, forecasting financial statement and making three statement modeling. So, so far, we have made uh, the uh, income statement and balance sheet and cash flow statement. In this video, we are going to complete the assumption sections and the remaining supporting schedule so that we can use them to forecast the next year's balance sheet and income statement and other financial statements. So uh, these are some supporting schedules. First, we need the opening value of debt. So for the opening value of debt, we will look whether the opening value of debt is given in the uh, data. So debt opening, yes, it's given here 50,000 which is in cell B24. So we can uh, just recall it. B24, so this is the opening value of that. I will fill it to the right, command R or control R. Now the issuance of or repayment that is also given in the uh, data. So we just take as it is. And so the closing value of that will be opening value plus any payment or uh, means minus any payment since that is negative so that's why i'm adding it so these are the closing value of that and uh, we also need the interest expense we already have calculated the interest expense but if you want you can just calculate it uh, from the like insert from the data so interest expense is here we just fill it to the right and then the equity schedule the opening value of equity let's see whether this is given in the uh the data so we go to the sheet that opening is given but the opening value of equity is not given but we can figure it out we can see the closing value of equity that is 170 170 170 in all of the years so closing value of equity is 170 and since no new shares have been issued during the year so uh, that will be the same so 170, whatever the closing value is, that will also be the opening value. So equal to 170,000. Issuance of repayment of equity is given here and equity capital closing is given. So that means during the year 170,000 was issued. So instead of here, I will insert it here, add share issued data and this one so that means initially they had zero opening equity that's why the closing value is uh, zero uh, 170 so we add this number and scroll it to the right and any equity issued during the year is zero 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 so i will just take that those values here and fill it to the right. Now the closing of last year becomes the opening of the next year. So fill it to the right. So these are the, uh, this is the equity schedule. Now the retained earning balance. So for the retained earning, we uh, know that the net income that we are going to add is going to be the same that we calculated here, net earnings. Where did I insert that? Net income, yeah, it's here. And we scroll it to the right. So this is the net earning. And now the retained earning opening balance. Let's see whether this is given in the uh, data. Interest issuance, receivable, changes in working capital, no. So the retained earning opening balance is not given. But we know this year's uh, retain earning we have already calculated in the balance sheet. It was here. So retain earning is 2474. So that means retain earning opening balance was zero. So currently since we don't have data we can just uh, type it manually here. And this will be opening balance plus net income. So this will be the closing balance. and the net last year's closing balance will be next year's opening balance and we fill it to the right and we also fill it to the right so we get the retained earning balances one four six two one four two six five three five three four zero and uh, six two five zero and so on 
so yeah so we are done with the uh, schedules and now we are going to fill the necessary assumptions and that's very very important thing because based on these assumptions we will predict the next five years financial statement okay so first of all we need to find out what is the uh, percentage change in the revenue so the formula for percentage change is previous year sales and current year sales we need these two values so current year sale divided by previous year sale minus one or you can take log difference or you can uh, like uh, uh, use the new minus old divided by old multiply by 100 that's up to you so what i will do i will just uh, take the uh, for the next year i will take the sales of current year which is this divided by sales of previous year and minus one so that will give me the percentage and cell is already formatted in percentage format so uh that, that's why it has given in percentage and i fill it to the right so it is giving me the percentage change in uh, the sales so 15 percent increase 11 percent increase eight percent increase so that is the growth of uh the sales now cost of goods sold so the company's assumption and usually what we do is we we take the percentage of revenue so equal to cost of goods sold divided by sales and since it is negative, so I will put a minus sign there. So cost of goods sold is 38.3% of the sales in the first year. And then for the next year, as we can see the proportions, that is 40%, 37.4% and so on. Then we have salaries and benefits. Uh, salaries and benefits we will take in dollar values. So it's the company's choice. They are taking in dollar values. So salaries and benefits is 2, 6, 427 which is in cell d10 so i will directly take d10 cell equal to d10 and uh, uh, rent that was just below that so i take the same number here that's also in dollar values so i fill it to the right and then we have uh, depreciation and amortization that is the percentage of op opening value of uh, property plant and equipment so we have the debt schedule and, and uh, the uh depreciation schedule so we take the depreciation expense divided by opening value and since it is negative so i will put a minus sign here so we get positive answer so that is 39 percent for the first year and if we fill it to the right so that is 39.9 then 40.6 41.2 and 41.7 percent of opening value of the uh assets it means non-current assets now interest that is percentage of opening value of debt. So equal to, we take the value of interest expense, that is this value divided by opening value of debt. So 5% and 5% and 3% in the last three years. Then uh, we have the tax rate. So tax is always calculated on net income before tax. So we go to the income statement, we take the amount of tax and divide that by earning before tax. And since tax is negative, so I will put negative sign, so I get a positive number. So that is the tax rate, which is 31%, 29%, and so on. And now we need some values for the balance sheet. So receivable days. Receivable days is in how many days uh, does the company take to receive money from the clients if they sell it today? After how many days will they get the money back? So that's the, sim uh, the, the simple formula I have already written there. You just divide uh sales receivable by sales and times 365 so we take the trade receivables there are several assumptions some people take average of receivable and some people take just the closing value of receivable so for simplicity we are taking the closing values but you know how to take the average you just take the previous value and current value and divide by two but for that you need previous year's balance sheet as well so receivables divided by sales times 365 so we get 18 days so that means it takes them almost 18 days to recover cash from the client and yeah they are consistent and then inventory days the formula is given there the inventory is uh, inventory divided by uh, cost of goods sold times 365 equal to the closing value of inventory that can be seen in the balance sheet divided by cost of goods sold and times 365 negative sign to avoid negative answer and fill it to the right so 73 73 and 73 72 72 now payable days 
payable days is uh, the same thing how many days they take to pay off the debt pay off the liability payables divided by cost of goods sold time 365 so equal to the value of payable from the balance sheet which is here divided by cost of goods sold times 365 and again cost of goods sold is negative there so i will put minus so that i get a positive answer so 37 days and that's it and then capital expenditure capital expenditure is uh, the investment in non-current assets that can be seen from the cash flow statement or also from the equity shed uh, the supporting schedules it's their capital expenditure and since they are negative so we should take negative values because capital expenditure means you are putting out money some uh, and then debt issued and equity issued so i will take it from the assumption section debt issued this one sorry that was debt issued i mistaken it to equity that issued and equity issued will be here all right so uh these are the uh, assumptions and now we will use these assumptions for the forecasting period of next five years so there are diff different ways you can take moving average you can take just average and take that average for the next five years so for simplicity we will take average of previous five years to find out the next five years rates and we will keep that simple simple average instead of moving average but you can take moving average as well if you don't uh, fix the cells so let me show you how so first of all growth rate will be the average of these four years so i type average and these four numbers and i press f4 to lock my reference and fill it to the right so that means i am assuming that for the next five years the growth in sales will be 10.32 percent now cost of goods sold so again average of these five years now we have five values so we can take average of five values and now uh, what i want is when i fill it to the right i don't want these cells to be changed but when i fill it down i want rows to be changed so that means i need to fix the columns but not the rows so uh, the the manual way is you if you want to fix the columns so you press dollar sign before the uh, column name or you can keep pressing f4 until you get this sign back and now we fill it to the right and if i scroll it down it will take the averages itself and now we need to fix the, uh, the percentage thing because these are dollar values so i will change that to currency so we get 24240 and so on same for this one i can just copy the number and paste it here the formula will work directly scroll it down so these are the values okay for the, for the equity i, I will just take zero is that my just company's assumption that I, we will not be issuing equities for the next uh, five years so that's why the average is becoming zero so we will take that value so these are our assumptions so now we have completed the assumption section and using these assumptions we will uh, project the next year's balance sheet and income statement and financial items like what we are doing is basically first from the data we are taking these assumptions and using these assumptions back to predict the next year's uh, financial statements. And all of these values are changing because we are just changing the sales and all, all that thing. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we will use these assumptions to project our financial statements. Thank you. See you in next video.